Product time. Okay. All right, first up. Books. Books. Why don't you the books while I get the new products? Yeah, I'm going to talk about these books. Um, we have a few. This is Hacking Raspberry Pi. Highly recommended by lots of people. Um, the books that we stock, there's a lot of books that we could stock, um, but we usually talk to the authors, we talk to the publishers, we talk to people who have already bought the book. That's why we usually don't put them in first, we wait a little bit. Yeah. So, Hacking Raspberry Pi. Here's why I like this model of books. So this book, um, it has like color photos we'll and color diagrams, photos. Yeah. which is really, really nice. It covers pretty much all the projects most people want to do. Like there's a little bit of hardware, there's like setting up the Pi camera, there's like setting up a server, XBMC, like Scratch, yeah. all that stuff, you know, using command line and stuff. So this is, um, I thought it was a very good book, so I added it. Yeah. Next up, Arduino for beginners. This is, yeah, this is the book. So this book is also uh, has really nice color diagrams, which I really like, yep. um, fritzing images and such, and, and photos. Yep. So I thought that that's kind of nice. If you're gonna like, if you're gonna have a book nowadays, I think you have to put in a little bit more effort than just you know, yep. like a black and white drawing or line drawing. So this is a very very nice book, and it's by uh, John Baikal, who is a uh, Make community member. Yep, and also. Um, I, this is this is the one I was looking forward to. This is beginning NFC, only because I know I don't know Don, but I do know Tom Igo and Brian Jeff. You know Tom Igo, and he's, he's a Arduino fan, member. They're fantastic. Tom Igo is one of the founding members of Arduino. Brian Jeff, right. senior editor at Maker Media, and uh, they spent a long time on this book. This is the book for NFC. So we got. Yeah, it. check it out. This has been like many many years in the yeah. work. It uh, it covers our NFC shield and breakout. So yeah. if you want more than just our online journals, check yep. out this book. Adafruit stuff in there. They chose the Adafruit stuff because it was easy for them to write about and use. And it's the only working NFC stuff out there. Yeah. Next up, Adventures in Raspberry Pi. This is another one. It comes with awesome projects. I like this book because it was project oriented. And um, the other cool thing. Color photos again. I yeah. love the color photos. If you want me to carry your book, uh, Color Diagrams is it. This is uh, a very well-written book for yeah. younger people, cover Scratch, Minecraft, setting up your Raspberry Pi. And this was Python. another one that was recommended not only by the authors, the publishers, the reviews that we saw, but kids. So, all right. Next, up, nice job. To, Carry on. Uh, speakers. Okay. Now I can finally. Now you can do your thing. I can do my thing. I feel like this is now your okay, turn. Okay. So these are little speakers. And uh, we have speakers in the store, but I really like these because they're ported and closed speakers. So you can see that they're 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 in a casing, and that casing they're they're quite small, uh, but they have nice mounting holes. Uh, they come with wires pre-attached. Um, you can mount them really easily, but you can see they're encased, and so that actually lets you put it into like if you don't if you're not able to build an enclosure, it's kind of hard to get good response from a speaker. It needs to be ported. I mean, these are not going to be like super high fidelity speakers, but they're going to sound better than if you just had a speaker just kind of floating around. Um, I think they're thin enough to do wearables with. Um, and yeah. all of our speaker drivers will drive them. That's and important. And they're, they're this small. So yeah. they're not even that big. Yeah. And yeah, there's a little port. Um, they're 4 ohm, 3 watt speakers. So perfect for use with any of our uh, amplifiers. We have three different amplifiers that will yeah. drive these speakers quite nicely. I like nicely. how you did it. You made the best amp boards, and then you got the best speakers that can go along with them. Good work, Lady Thank you. Nice job. Okay, next up. Um, Maybe I'll skip around a bit. Um, oh, these also work really good with our uh, uh, seven and yeah. ten and, and, and other uh, inch uh, audio HDMI drivers. The HDMI yeah. screen drivers also have audio built in. These plug yeah. in perfectly. Okay. Ooh, nice. I'm not going to skip around. I'm just going to keep going the order okay. these came in because we just got to keep jamming. Um, okay. People asked for it. We did it. This is the Qualia board standalone. This is yeah. This is just the the, the driver board for the Qualia. Um, so this is, allows you to plug in an iPad 3 or iPad 4 display. I mean, this is the display used in the iPad 3 or 4, the yeah. LP097, QX1. Um, this is the, the, just the driver board. You can just you give it five, you know, 9 to 12 volts DC, basically, uh, and, you, and you can plug in the um, Retina display. Uh, I don't suggest this for people because the connector that you connect, the, the, um, the little connector like right, yeah. right here, 
uh, the little thin one that you connect to the, the display itself is really, 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 really yeah. delicate. I'll tell you if you should get this. If you've already taken apart an iPad and put it back together, or if you're someone who has like the iFixit tools, if and you're stuff just like, that, like a super, if you're yeah. like super like good and you're, you're you if feel your like you're careful, Kyle and you're the CEO of iFixit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you can, if you're very comfortable with delicate electronics, because this is a very, very delicate connector. Like really, yeah. uh, people th don't say they say, oh yeah, yeah, I, I bet it's delicate, but then they're like, oh my god, I just broke it. So yeah. this is, uh, you know, we, the, the reason that we offered the kit first is because it, we, we assemble it and then we close it and we, we yeah. connect it so it's, you know, and then we test it so you know it's yeah. good. With this, it's yeah. at your own risk because we're not going and, to fix um, it. It's not fixable once it's broken. This is the kit that we sell. This is the Qualia display that we make and, um, you know, this is the full, it's the only DIY monitor kit that I know of. And it's stunning, and this is what it looks like when it's all Yeah, together. it's a beautiful yeah. 2000 by 1500 pixel display, use a display port, works yeah. great on any Mac or Windows or Linux computer that has display port on the motherboard. Every yeah. Mac does, so we suggest Mac okay. users. I guess I'm gonna skip around, so because we have the driver board. Yes, we also have. Saying, like, do you have a screen? Yes, we, we have do. the screen too. This is a new screen, it's actually from LG. Uh, it's a, a new LP097QX1. Uh, that 2000 by 1500. Also, uh, now right in the display. Right in the display. Uh, using the iPad 3 and 4. It's a lovely screen. Uh, it's got a screen protector for, on it. It is brand new. It works great with the driver. So, if you are getting the driver, you may want the screen. But again, yeah. if you're not super comfortable with this very delicate character, I suggest you get the kit. Yep. Please get the kit. Yep. It'll save you a lot of tears because you can't fix the connector yeah. once it's broken. It can be hardcore all you want, but um, no I broke on, I broke three <laughs> before no I figured on this it out. One. We had to put something on the screen, like, don't break this and say, I did, I broke it. So, next up, um, we added um, probably Pardon one me. of the best uh, low-cost 3D printers out there. We so spent a long cute. time. cute. This is the PrinterBot, the 2014 one. This is also for experts. I should say this, and we put this on the screen. It's a kit. It's a kit. You it's assemble a kit. it. It's one of the more open source uh, 3D printer kits out there. Um, our resident expert, uh, Matt Griffin, who was at MakerBot and also writing 3D printed books and uh, has selected a lot of the printers that we have here, said this is the best one. We had Brooke, who, the CEO and founder of the company, out, and this is the one to get. So um, it's, if, it's simple, it's yeah. a kit, but if you want to get into building your own uh, printer, a 3D printer, and it doesn't yeah. have a build, build, big build volume. It looks like about three inches by three inches by two inches, yeah. or three inches or so. But you can build small stuff. Uh, you can still print some of our wearable projects. I, I'm assuming you can print NinjaFlex with it. You can definitely print uh, PLA with it, right? Yeah. PLA. Well, and you know, here's the thing. So I'm just gonna say it. So you gotta look at the camera. So everybody asked for an open source hardware um, 3D printer, and we delivered. We got the Tazbot. That one is FSF certified, which is the hardcore open source thing. And then Stallman said, uses it. Yeah. And then everyone said, well, I really want a 3D printer that's under $350. And if you have that, I would buy that. Well, this is under $350. So the yeah. printer bot is $349. So I don't know which more, what more you want now, folks. Like, we did it. This is really well, hard. Well, they want love and acceptance, but that we can't quite sell that yet. So instead, we have I mean, 3D printers. The love and acceptance is coming in. It's We have to freight it in. It's and, it's stuck in customs. It's stuck in customs. And that's right. It takes a while. Love and acceptance now made in Taiwan. So OK, next up. We okay. Have a couple more products, and then that's it. I okay, I got these here. demos. Yeah. All right. So this is the compass sensor that I talked about earlier. This is a triple axis uh, compass magnet. It's a like magnetometer, but it's used for compass sensing. It's I squared C. It's a very uh, low cost sensor. This is like ten bucks for the breakout board. Um, it's five volt safe. We put an extra circuitry on there. So you can use it with an Arduino. And I have a demo showing it off. So let us go to overhead. Okay. Well, I can show this guy. Okay. So. Um, this is the sensor here, and this is a breakout connected to my Arduino, and then I've got this little LCD, which I will hold here, and as you see, if I twist it, it can tell me where north is, which is about there, which is true. That's up, uptown. That is true. That's true. It's uptown Manhattan. So you can, you can tell what the heading is, and zero is north, and then, you know, well, then I reset. Hold on. Oh, wait. Live demo. Okay. Second. Um, we're back. So yeah, you can twist it around. So this is a, uh, a compass sensor, so yeah, it can tell you which way is north. The deal is it doesn't have an accelerometer built into it. Um, and not having an accelerometer means it can't tell if it's tilted. So this works really well. The code that we have, for example, is assuming that it's flat to the ground like this. It's flat to the earth. If you, if you tilt it up, however, it 
does not sense as well because it doesn't know that mm. it's tilted. Okay. So for that, you want a tilt compensated accelerometer magnetometer, which we do have in the store. It's the uh, LSM 303, which uh, we have in the shop and, and works very well. It's a little bit more expensive though. So if, if you're in a situation where you can make sure, like if you have a robot, and you know yeah. the robot's like it's driving flat, then you can put the magnetometer on the body of the robot. You know that it's not going to be like tilting up and down, and that way you can tell which way is north. Or if you're using this in wearables, you know that you know the person's going to be standing upright, so you put it on like their their chest or their back, and that way you can tell which way is north without having to do the tilt compensation for if the magnetometer is twisting in space. Because the magnetometers can't do that, so it's a trade-off. Yeah. Uh, if you if the if you don't need tilt compensation, ten bucks, you get a great magnetometer, and you can tell which way north is, which is about over there. Yeah. Okay, uh, next Wait. up. Yeah, there you go. Apparently my batteries are dying. Okay. <laughs> Not me personally. Really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm okay. Everything's right, good. Right, right. My mic batteries are also kind of going down a oh, little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, it happens. All right. So I'm going to be getting rid of this demo. Yeah. All right. And then last but not least, this is, I think, the, the bigger demo of the evening. Hold on. i got to get my demo going. Can you talk right. about this thing? Yeah, I'm going to talk about this thing. Well, first I'll zoom into the photo because this is a nice photo. I like this. Yeah, this is a nice photo. So this is yeah, the... We're... We have two different... Uh, Malexis temperature sensors, and these are kind of neat. We actually have a non-contact temperature sensor already. I think in we're the selling shop. Sputnik now or something. What is this thing? I know it looks like <laughs> huge. This is a sensor that uses um, it detects IR coming off of a device uh, or device. It's a device that has an IR sensor in it that can detect IR waves coming off of an object, and so it can detect the temperature of an object, and an object doesn't have to touch. So other temperature sensors we have, such as the OneWire DS18P20s and, and family and the TMP36s and, and other assorted friendly uh, sensors, they have to be touching the object. It's, they, they're, they're measuring the, the, the object, the, the chip itself. This is measuring the temperature of something it's pointed at, which is different. Um, which means that it can measure extremely hot and extremely cold things that uh, are outside the range, which is really nice. It can also measure the uh, average temperature of an area because it has a field of view about 90 degrees, so there's like a cone. Um, we've seen these used in a lot of projects, like if you want to, uh, you know, if you go to like the doctor's office and they just point a thing and they click it and they're like, oh, we know what your body temperature is, and you're like, how did you do that? You didn't even touch me. They're using probably this sensor. Really? This is, yeah, this is a really high-end sensor. This is used for medical equipment a lot. They have a medical version even that's higher precision, but most we, people We don't. can get like retina displays, medical, medical equipment. This is crazy. 2014 is awesome. Uh, yes, yeah, so this, is, this is a cool sensor. And what's yeah. neat is it's got this metal can which protects it because it's meant to be able to measure up to 1,000 degrees C. So yeah. you can use it for like, you know, if you're like making your reflow oven, you can point at the circuit board and it'll tell you the temperature yeah. of your circuit board. I wish you had some demo with something cold though, because like, I don't know, I don't, I mean, I, you don't trust me? I mean, I kind of believe you. Okay, anyway, so it's a, it's a four pin sensor, so it's I squared C, and you can power either with three volts or five volts. There's two versions. So pick the right one because it's calibrated to the whatever oh, okay. temperature for that voltage. So if you're using an Arduino, get the five volt version. If you're using um, like a, a Gemma or like a Flora or like, you know, an MSP430, you want the three volt version. So just pick the right one, same price. You don't, have a, you don't have a demo you can show? No, or I do have a demo. Oh! Let's go to the demo. Oh, look, you have a demo ready to go. Okay, so I got my demo ready to go. So here is that sensor, and there's a lot of wires going on here, but it's, okay. it's pretty harmless. It's, um, you need, uh, it comes with two uh, I squared C pull-up resistors. You'll need those because uh, it doesn't have them built in. And right now it's just measuring like the ambient temperature. And you notice that the ambient temperature and the object temperature are the same. But if I get a tasty treat. Oh, you have a popsicle. Well, yeah. yeah. Like I need a treat because it's I'm doing a show. Yeah. So we have this very cold treat that I got, and I can measure how cold it is. So you go like this by holding it in front, and it's like, oh, the ambient temperature, the temperature of the sensor is still around room temperature, but the temperature of the popsicle is like six degrees or so, maybe ten degrees. It's going to melt soon because I've had it out for a little bit. Yeah. So you can see it can oh, measure. Oh, I understand how it works now. Yeah. So it's like, okay, measure like the ambient air. That's then... helpful because. Who cares about the object temperature um, sometimes, and who cares about the like? You get to you get to get the data you want. Yeah, you get both, so you can tell yeah. like how cold something oh, is, right. you know, and how cold, how warm the the area is. Actually, you need to have you know both usually to yeah. to tell like okay, like is is the object temperature that much different than um, what's yeah? The is difference? it is it heating up and getting cold, or is the the outside 
the other object getting yeah. hot or cold. Okay. All right. Orange flavor. Okay, so that's the demo. So these are um, pretty easy to use sensors. We've got uh, example code, tutorial, library, popsicles. Uh, I can't download the popsicles, but you can download um, unlearn.info.com. Yeah. Tutorials for all of these lovely items. Okay. Um, and with that, Lady Ada is new products. Yeah. Good work. Okay. You did a great job.